Truck World TV, sponsored by Auto Trader Trucks. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truckwell TV, here from our home from home at Junction 38 Services on the M6. Yep, and as you can see outside, it is sunny. The weather is definitely changing for the better, which is great news for all you lovely ladies and gentlemen who drive your vehicles out there and keep the UK moving. And for that, we sincerely thank you. It's a very busy show again, as always, and here's what's coming up this week. We take a behind the scenes look at one of the largest Scania dealers in Europe. Tim's road test is the all-new Iveco Eurocargo, and our driver's chats this week are focused on proposals to ban trucks from city centres. Well, to kick us off this week, we've got one of our factory tours for you, and this one was a belter over in France at the Bourgogne Brest Tea Factory. Of course, T being Renault's range of trucks. Correct, the Renault um, T, yeah. Quick question, do you think I went for this one? I, the one who do all the UK features when it's dark and raining, would you think Tim might have gone when it's a nice bit of fancy air travel? I'll tell you what, it was hard work. Geneva, this, France, fine wine on the plane. Oh, yeah, I think you live in a different world, you. Here's Tim Campbell's report on the Renault T factory from Bourgogne Brest. The Renault T range is a common sight on UK roads and construction sites. And at this sprawling factory in bourgogne bresse in France, they produce a new T every four and a half hours. Now, like many modern factories, indeed many modern offices, this is all open plan. You get an absolutely great view of the whole place. But the bit that we need is right at the very start, the other side of the factory. It's one heck of a trek, I'll tell you. Here we have it. Believe it or not, this is the birth certificate for the truck. I've actually got a chassis number on here. We've actually got the fact that it's what truck it is and also that it's going to Grand Britannia, which is obviously the UK. And this is the basis of it. You've got two frames and believe it or not, in four and a half hours from now, this will actually be a truck. One of the key successes of this factory is efficiency and they have developed systems that use a skilled 1450 strong workforce and automated processes that integrate seamlessly along a traditional moving production line. And one of the initial stages is fitting mounting points and hardware to the chassis frames. What amazes me as you're going down and watching the truck being made is the tools like this, the people behind this, you've made, obviously this is a riveter, when you look at it, it makes it so simple indeed. It takes you, days gone by, you'd have had a guy there knocking hell out of a chassis for three or four minutes. This thing does it in less than like 10, 15 seconds. Amazing piece of engineering. With everything securely bolted and riveted into place, the next step is to tackle the complex electrical and hydraulic wiring systems. But as with every stage in the factory, the skilled workforce make it look effortless. I'll tell you what, I saw the plumbing on my washing machine and that's only got two wires on it. There's hundreds of metres of cable in every truck, every inch of which has to be correctly routed and secured to the chassis before the truck can progress. Well, one thing about modern factories is you get used to robots going around, but the one thing that does worry is you're never too sure exactly where they're going to go. Now, much to the disappointment of my wife, these will never run you over because they've got the sensors. In fact, every stage of the 550 metre production line is protected with proximity sensors, so if there is any unforeseen holdup along the production line or someone steps in front of a robot, it will automatically halt the production until it's safe to continue. Well, it's only when you get up against them you realise how big these engines are. That's a 13 litre uh, engine and then our vehicle here, we've got the 11 litre engine. But when you look at the size, they're the size of a small car. Unbelievable. As with most of the major components for the trucks, the engines, axles and the cabs are also delivered in from other specialist Renault factories and suppliers. And because everything is barcoded and allocated at the start of the process, the correct cab for our truck rolls into place the exact time the chassis frame is ready to receive it.
They send over to the cab team, who have the unenviable task of connecting all of the hundreds of cables up and connecting the exterior trim. And that's whilst everything is constantly moving along the production line. We caught up with Alan, one of the men behind the success of the supremely efficient production process. You must be very proud of this. Yes, uh, very, very proud of the track, uh, of the product, very proud of the plant, very proud also of the people who are making all those things. There is a lot of challenges each day, there is a lot of challenges each minute. I can talk about two main things for me, uh, the involvement of people, and the uh, fact to be involved with the people. Uh, it's very, a, a very important point for us. And the second point is the management of diversity. Uh, as you can see here, a truck like that uh, is never the same as the following. This management of diversity is something very, very uh, impressive, where even some uh, people coming from company uh, building cars uh, saying yes the management of the diversity of the product is very impressive uh, here. With a final systems check at the end of the production line the truck is fired up before heading off to the test track for the initial final delivery testing runs. Well I can't believe it Four and a half hours ago, this was just two chassis frames. That's it. Now it's a full-blown truck that we're driving along the roads. Uh, they do this test, then they've got a couple of other tests they have to do. But basically, after this, the next stop for this truck is, as they say in French, Grand Britannia. It really was a fantastic operation there, but of course, as fast as those trucks are coming off the production line, they're going to dealerships around yeah. Europe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know you, one of your earlier careers was in fleet, fleet sales. sales yeah. I've got quite a few friends who work in automotive sales and it's quite a high pressure, high turnover in terms of, of vehicles. Um, similar in, in commercial yeah. vehicles? I, I, yeah, there's always demand, you've got to sell more, you never sell enough, uh, that's the way it is. But not only that, on the truck side of it, it's just about selling, it's also about maintaining and looking after them. There's a lot more trucks get maintained and looked after on a repair and main basis. So the dealer is really more, the relationship with the dealer is a lot closer with the customer and the dealer is a lot closer than it is in cars. And what's, what's the sort of lifespan? Because I know in cars typically in, in um, it's sort of three years and then you might look at, no, at changing it. You'd look at five, is a, I mean four and a half, five. A lot of them are on contract now between three and five years. So that's your first life. But obviously there's a second and third life on vehicles as well, just like there is in cars. Well, a few weeks ago, we were privileged enough to get a behind-the-scenes look at one of the biggest truck dealerships in the country, and that's Caltruck in the Midlands. If you're going on the motorway, you're in your car, you're going past the truck, and you're thinking to yourself, I wonder if they look after trucks the same way as they look after the cars. Well, the short answer is no. It's a lot more intensive, and it's a lot more involved. Today, we've come down to the Midlands to visit the head office of Caltruck, with the largest independent Scania dealer in Europe. The network of 21 dealer sites keeps thousands of new and new Scanias on the road across Europe and they export spare parts across the world. With so many vehicles to maintain and look after, it's no surprise that the service bays here at the West Bromwich site are constantly full, with trucks getting routine service and maintenance repair work with a schedule that would have most car MOT and service stations running for the hills. A key part of the Kel truck service is that most vehicles are now monitored remotely so that service schedules and repair works that occur can automatically be triggered by the vehicles and then quickly booked in. This is more efficient for the operator and garage teams as they can plan ahead and know exactly what vehicle is coming in, when it's coming in and what work it will be requiring and of course what spare parts might be needed. Now in the new parts section, it's around about £300,000 worth of parts stock there. But in this reclaim section here, there's nearly half a million pounds worth. If a vehicle is written off or some parts reach the end of life, there are still many elements of the truck that can be rebuilt or serviced to provide good as new stock for existing vehicles on the road. This provides an essential spurs line to the used truck market 
and also to countries where they may run vehicles for many more years than we might do in the UK. Here I've got with me is Russ Warner, who's the After Sales Director for Keltruck. What has changed then over the years since when you started in? What, what, what's changed without the trucks and everything like that from a, from a sales and uh, service point of view? I think um, standards are a lot higher now than they were when I first started um, in the industry. Um, focus on uh, dealerships and standards within the dealerships have changed. Um, service points have, have changed from a, a point of view with um, you know, the product itself. Product reliability is something that's got much, much um, better. Um, and ours you know, are on the decline as a result of the product. Have you seen a growth, trucks are getting well looked after, you said changing, have you seen a growth in repair and maintenance contracts where you look, we're looking after the vehicle longer and longer? Yeah, repair and maintenance contracts are on the increase. Um, we've got um, the products that sold with a, a two or a three year um, package within Scania and, and our you know, uh, challenge is really to try and extend that to um, four and fifth year. You know, for me, from my point of view, I see it becoming more of a mechanical base to electronic base. We've got telematics yeah, in there. Absolutely. It's technology and training is something that's going to continue um, to develop. Um, things are on vehicles now. We actually dial into trucks now, whereas years ago we'd never, you know, be able to um, potentially uh, fill a workshop in terms of hours. Whereas now we can dial into the, the vehicle itself, work out exactly what service um, is required. Um, and obviously keep downtime for the customer to a minimum. Now this dealer sells new and used trucks. That's probably no big surprise to you. But one thing that I did like when I saw and I had a quick walk around, this lovely bonneted tea cab. You don't see them that often anymore. Scan used to bring them into the UK many years ago, um, but because the popularity wasn't great, because mainly this bit here takes up very, very important things like pallets, and so we can't carry as much stuff. So it's a very specialised area that they used to get involved with, but they still had that little bit of je ne sais quoi about them. But now, I must admit, I really, really do like them. And I have to be impartial, I know, but the Scania T-Cab is just that little bit special. So next time you're looking at a truck on the UK road, be it an old classic like a T-Cab or a brand new R520, it's good to know its safety and performance are in good hands. Well, that's it for part one, but join us after the break when we've got Tim's road test of the all-new Iveco Eurocargo. And we're also going to be asking drivers of views on congestion charging. Is it right to ban trucks from the city centre? See you soon. Truck World TV, sponsored by Auto Trader Trucks.